Alrighty. Q&A time. We're dressing it up a little bit. See how this goes. See what you think. Thanks to all of you. Submit your questions. Should be fun. I even asked for some fun questions, and I'm sure your questions mirror the bedroom life of some of you. Underwhelming and coming up just a teensy weensy itsy bit short. Ain't that right, Mountie? Anyways, let's move on. Q&A time, bitches. Jesse McRae, who is your favorite porn star? Excellent, excellent question, Mr. McRae. If she's black and does lesbian videos, there's a very good chance that I enjoy her immensely. Uh, if you had to narrow it down, I mean, like Jada Fire is the gold standard. Big tits. She liked doing girl scenes. And when she got super excited, she went pee-pee. Don't judge, damn it! White boys are nasty fuckers. Don't ever forget that. Uh, currently, you have to say Misty Stone. When she starts saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. She's not the only one saying, oh my goodness. Anna Fox. Oh, yeah, I would, I would marry her. Like my whole, my whole purpose in life would be to fundamentally ruin her porn career because she would always be pregnant. Don't judge. Um, for, for the white lady side of things, because yes, I mean, sexy women are still sexy women, even if it's not necessarily my flavor. Sin Sage would be my flavor. She knows how to trib like nobody's business. Nobody's business. Nobody's business. Yeah, the slag daddy likey. So there you go. There's just a couple and many more. Surely, that I left out now. Brian Walmer, uh, did you end up watching Slammiversary? No. For some reason this year, I really balked at the thought of paying like $40 for the show, and I just don't really have much time, so trying to spend whatever little bit of available time I have uh, to watch, however, three plus hours of that show and then review it, eh, especially if I'm not going to follow it up with reviewing the Impact shows weekly. Uh, just decided I'd skip out on it. Maybe I'll watch at some point in time down the road if I get uh, more free time. Kieran Chase, didn't Double J's Hall of Fame speech make you emotional? You know what makes me emotional? Alleged grown men playing with my little pony. That's what makes me emotional. Not up, grow a set, be a man. No bronies in this bitch. No, I didn't make me emotional. Why? Because I didn't watch. That's why. Mountie's Corner. If you could get $100,000 to do a karaoke of With My Baby Tonight with Double J, would you do it? That is $100,000. That would allow me to pay off my car. It would allow me to potentially get into a different house. Um, help me pay to go to school. Uh, yes. I'd air guitar with him for 5000 bucks at this fucking point. Set it up. Make it happen. $100,000 to sing karaoke of one song with the Memphis mid-card piece of crap? Why the hell wouldn't I? Especially if you could record it and put it on YouTube. Imagine the memories that can be made for one and all. That question didn't go quite the way you thought, did it, Mountie? Now the question for you is, how come you haven't put a baby in her yet? You married her, for God's sakes. Your life is already going to be slowly but surely over. The only revenge you have is to knock her up. Do it! I know I cursed you with the three daughters and everything that was the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, but damn it all, just do it. Get to work. Get to work. Byron Andreas. Would Smokey refer to Bobby Lashley as Bobby motherfucking Lashley and Moose as motherfucking Moose? Um, see, the, like, the, the motherfucking thing that was revert, reserved for certain individuals, Mark Henry, Seamus, uh, if you ever wondered why that came to be, it just came to be, damn it, you don't need to ask. Um, Lashley might have gotten, like, battle-toed Bobby Lashley bitch, um, Moose, uh, might have gotten, like, the Moose is loose or something, I don't know, I don't know if they would have gotten the motherfucking label. A voice of logic. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Byron Andreas. I had a second question. Completely skipped over it. Will you ever review King of the Ring 98 and did you watch it live? I did not watch it live. Uh, next day, if I recall correctly. Granted, it's 20 years ago and I'm getting older. Um, 
will I ever review it? I thought I had before, but I'll have to search the channel. Maybe I didn't. If that's the case, that is a severe oversight, and I will need to at some point in time, yes. Voice of Logic. A bigger WrestleMania draw. Honey Boo Boo or a combination of the founder, the suspect sissy, Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler, and the Young Bucks combined. Now, for my money, it's obviously going to be Honey Boo Boo, especially if Brad Maddox is there. Honey Beef Mode in the house. You ever wonder why it was called Beef Mode? Ask Paige how that went. All up in her eye. Uh, sadly, though, it's probably the other combination just because of the power of the Young Bucks being able to draw a few thousand neckbeards. The Metal Smart. Have you ever tried watching Chikara? No. No. Don't hate it. Don't like it. Just don't care to check it out. Eric Dennis, when do you think John Cena is going to reach number 17? I almost wonder if they're going to pull the kibosh on that and he doesn't want to go to 17, although I still feel like there's a part of his ego that would love to go to 17. I'll go somewhere between the next 12 to 18 months. I still believe it's got to happen. Because if it doesn't, then what was the whole point of everything you did with him for over a decade? The Alpha Dog 101. Who do you want to be world champions and women's champions after SummerSlam? I don't fucking know at this point. I don't know that I particularly care. I mean, that's just the way it is. I don't know and I don't care. Cyanide Rain. If OTR Central had a series finale, what would it be like? What would the topic be? I'd have a feeling it would be like the ultimate shade session. I would just probably shit on so many people in so many different ways. If you're going to go out, go out right and go out swinging. And I'd probably try to make it the most epic of rants of all time. Probably involve me being shirtless with a tie wrapped around my head and doing weird things like rubbing peanut butter on my body or something. I don't know. Fucking I don't know. Who knows what the topic would be. But very likely would probably be a burial of a lot of things over the several years. It'd be like my ultimate revenge, my ultimate roast, and then drop mic exit stage left. Alfredo Regalado, will Samoa Joe be WWE or Universal Champion one day? Mm, there's a part of me that wonders, because you see like Kevin Owens was champion. So it makes me think that Samoa Joe could. AJ Styles has been a multiple time WWE champion, so it makes me think that, that could he could. I just wonder if there's something about Vince with Samoa Joe that would hold him back from going there. I really do. Uh, Danny Boy, why are TakeOver pay-per-views better than the main roster pay-per-views? Well, the TakeOver pay-per-views are significantly shorter. They have fewer matches. Every match gets a lot of time. Um, you're also looking at that. Those shows are only every couple of months. Uh, the overall segment of the audience that you're appealing to is much smaller and much more hardcore. So the product is specifically designed to cater just to them. I mean, there's a lot of reasons these guys have fewer shows to do so they can do more uh, rehearsals and more practice. So, you know, there's a lot of things. MIM Arsenal, how would you look back on the WWE product from 2002 to 2008? Not the Attitude Era, not the Hogan Era, but not as bad sometimes as I maybe thought it was. It was just in comparison at the time. I thought it was worse than what it really was. Um, and days of the WWE that I desperately wish would come back. Swan Dog, fuck Mary Avoid, Nia Jax, Tamina, or Karma? Um, I would fuck Tamina, but then afterwards I would immediately have to run because I know there's some type of hereditary thing where they like to kill their partners. Too soon? Uh, Mary Nia Jax, like, yeah, she could get it every single day. She's already big anyways. So you slap some A1 on your shit, man, and should go down on it like a T-bone go. <laughs> and she would have no problem taking the cream pies and having the babies. Uh, karma strikes me as a crazy bitch now that I would just completely and totally avoid. If I'm going to do crazy in black, then I'll just do what I've done in previous situations, and at least they... Or somebody that I could like pick up and you know freaky white boy stuff. Um, Brian Knight push Barry Fire the YWC edition. The Lex Man Chase Oliver or Good Mike Work. Hmm. Push Barry Fire. Push Barry Fire. Three guys that I appreciate. Three guys that have been doing it for quite a while. Three guys that I respect on different levels in different ways. 
But push, bury, fire. Um, push Chase Oliver because he has by far the least subscriber count. And there's something about his uh, bullwinkle-sounding self uh, spewing the gospel of Randall Keith Orton that I just feel like deserves more attention than he gets. So I would push him. I would bury Delexman. I'm sorry, Alex, but it is bullshit fundamentally that you have more subscribers on your channel than this one does. That's insane. So I would bury him. And I would fire good mic work only because... It seems like, he li I think he lives out in like San Diego, like he lives in a great place, he gets to enjoy the sun, like you got to have better stuff to do with your life than be amongst this schmaz of stupidity and suck that is wrestling. So you fire him for the greater good of him being able to enjoy his life. Nothing personal, trying to help. But I would push Chase, i bury the shit out of the Lex man, and fire good Mike work for his own purposes and benefit. Uh, Keys 10, over under on the number of years till the um, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks sign with WWE. This is what? End of July 2018. I'll put the over under at a year and a half. Right around Royal Rumble 2020. That's where I think the over under is. I might go a little bit over and might say uh, WrestleMania 30, whatever the fuck, six? Yeah, maybe. Um, but somewhere in there. But they might not. And for the sake of the business, and probably for them, it might be better that they don't. Although Omega would come there and make more money uh, because he would have a massive following with him. Uh, but the business, I almost feel like, even if I don't always agree with what they do, even if I don't always like what they represent, the business needs them to be outside of WWE. So I'm in no hurry to see him there. Horror Movie Review 73. Did any 80s, 90s wrestling fans ever think it would be as bad as it is now? I don't know that he ever thought it was going to be this bad, speaking as an 80s, 90s wrestling fan. Uh, once Vince bought out ECW and WCW in 2001, I knew that wasn't good for the business. I knew it would never be the same. But I never thought it would truly be this bad. So your simple answer is no. Never thought it would be this bad. Not as good, different, yes, but not nearly this bad. So, there you have it. All right, well, I kind of went through that pretty quickly. I enjoyed it. It was short. It's like good sex. Should be under 15 minutes. You get some pleasure out of it, and then you move the fuck on with your day. Now, some of you might be wondering why he's wearing the shirt and tie. Well, because I just worked 15 hours yesterday. Got about three and a half hours of sleep. Got up early, too early. Didn't want to go back to bed. And I sat there and thought to myself, hey, I'll shower, start getting ready for work. And you know what? I got some videos to do. That's right. What are you doing at 5.30 in the morning? You panty waist? You lightweight? I'm getting in shirt and tie and freaking doing Q&A videos about wrestling. God, do I need to reevaluate my priorities in life. Thanks again for submitting your questions. This is OTR Essential, blah, blah, blah. It's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.